for in the world. Do you think she actually sits there on the computer as well? I do. I think she chastity. personally answers. Well, otherwise, what's chastity do? Lick stamps. <laughs> lick stamps. I don't know what she licks. What do we? Oh dear. Uh, oh, Anna Nicole. Anna Nicole Smith went on her website, bought the T-shirt, the biography, and some pantyhose. Anna Nicole pantyhose autographed. But I just love the way you get this little picture, it's a little box where it goes bump into the car. I like um, But you don't have to pay. You can just put it in the cart and then cancel. Right. So, so you get the satisfaction of shopping with that. Do it money. for days. I, I was even on the Aussie Osborne site shopping, but I didn't buy anything, but I put it all in the car. <laughs> Does Sharon Osborne have anything for sale? On dolls. Dolls of dolls of her and dolls of the kids and dolls of Ozzy, oh, really? but I think she's fantastic but I don't really yeah. want a Sharon Osbourne doll. Right. Yeah, but she's I great. Like that. Yeah, but I do like internet shopping. It's I just, like eBay. Well, I've never been on eBay. eBay is you get an eBay? auction. You, you have to bid on things. It's an auction. You do a search, say like you want a... Um, you know, a Jean Cocteau drawing or something. So you, you you go to eBay. But can you cancel at the last minute? Can you get them all worked up and go, um, okay, I bid? If it's they won't let you bid anymore. Like if if you if you bid and then you don't end up paying, like they won't let you. Like if you have a bad bidding history, oh, they then block you. Yeah, they won't let you. But I bought um, like an old Kraftwerk T-shirt from there, um, and I bought. What else did I buy? It's just sort of fun because you're sitting at your computer, you do a search, you think, um, I tried to find Transvision Vamp. I tried to find Transvision yeah. Vamp. Do you know what? Nobody on the face of the earth I found a Dead or Alive t shirt from Nude. It said the word nude written all over it. Like, oh, it was like very Stephen Sprouse t shirt. Biggest flop. We must have sold like backwards. They were like, it was like sort of like the word written. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I went on. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I went on this whole thing of not putting a picture of me on the t shirt. Uh, and just writing all over it because at the time the record company thought that probably my image was a bit unpalatable and we took pictures off the t-shirt and just put graffiti on it and nobody bought one it was a complete turkey it was for the nude album though right yeah and I kind of liked them because there wasn't a picture of me on them what did you get his um like prosciutto Artichokes with parmesan and these little mini radishes or something. Oh, I got lethal garlic yogurt. Uh, what did you got? They're making out for me tonight. No? Garlic yogurt, uh -oh. it's really strong. Uh -oh. How much was the new t-shirt? I think about $20, but I'm not sure. That was a bargain. I want one. I don't have any. any. We burned about, honest to God, we got 5000 in the house. 5000 We didn't sell. We even did pantyhose with nude written all over them and jewellery. It was all this really nice metal jewellery. Not one person bought them. I mean, I think like five people bought the earrings and the pantyhose. We were so desperate by the end of that Japanese tour that I was going on stage wearing the whole thing and it just looked absurd. Mm -hmm. And then the merchandisers, because they lost so much money on it, just unloaded their excess stock on us. We couldn't do anything with it. We had dusters. Clear Where is it now, so Burned. We just burned it. You don't it. have any of it? Not one. Because it was such a turkey, it was embarrassing, because I was so locked into not putting a picture. And sometimes with a merchandise want, thing... I want a Dead or Alive t-shirt, I don't have one. Don't even own a t-shirt, although there are some really, really good ones being done by Gothra, but they're in a plique. Gothra's the artist that did the exhibition. Mm -hmm. I have photographs of me, and he's got a book. Mm -hmm. Coming out called Man Made, which is all men, but they're not in makeup. He's used really unconventional things in it, like he's covered somebody's face in caviar. So and did things. the makeup and took the photos, no? Yeah, he did the makeup and took the photos and stuff. And um, he's made this kind of really odd applique, but I have concerns that people, without being patronized about it, people who buy merchandise, I'm not really sure what they want. I've never bought a t shirt with anyone on, never, and they probably just want a normal. Like photo, but he's made this three-dimensional plique thing on a t-shirt. He's going to put them on sale soon. I think they're really good, and I'd have one. I'm working on that t-shirt with Vivian Westwood. I showed her yesterday the ideas. Her name in Russian. So that's a Boobly Beska. Boobly Beska or something. It looks like it says. Because she opened the store in Moscow, so you have to Did she like the Russian print? She liked the um, she liked the idea, and then she said she would see, you know, what they would do with it or whatever. So. It would be great if they made it. Have you sure. sold the idea to her? I don't think... 
I think if they ended up producing it, they would give me something. I don't know, but a sock, a sock maybe. Um, no, I love her. I it really doesn't do. matter. I mean, with her, it's like I think she's amazing. Um, I think she's a really. Uh, I'm really bankrupting myself with her. Uh huh. Steve always says, instead of just getting your royalty checks, why don't you just redirect them? Uh -huh. So I think our company was called Casnell Limited, just give the royalties to her mm -hmm. and just go in and take clothes whenever you want. Because I mean, you saw the shoe collection tonight. Mm -hmm. But I, it's not that I care that much that she makes clothes, I just want to give her money. Um, but I want something for it, uh -huh. you know. She's well, just important, isn't she? But not in a fashion sense. She is important in a fashion sense, yeah, sorry. But she's also important more about, she's all about ideas. And yeah, ideas. It's about ideas, and she values ideas more than anything else. And the ideas take the form of clothes most of the time, mm. but it's all about ideas with her. It's like the same thing with, you know, Andy Warhol or Marcel Duchamp. It's like the idea was the most important thing. And with Vivian, it's all about the idea. Yeah, Andy Warhol still excites me. But well, he had great why. ideas and he had ideas that changed things. There must have been some magic in it. When I went to his exhibition, and I was looking at it, and he stood back, there was some kind of there was some kind of arrangement there, but it looked really chaotic, and some of it really went above my head, but I just thought it was so great he did but it. this was a whole retrospective, right? Uh, a tape or something? Yeah. Uh -huh. And you'd walked out all of these sections of the exhibition, and after every third section was a merchandise store with something to buy. And that was really good because it caused compulsive shopping. I came out of the museum with so many anti Warhol boxes that I didn't even want. I just had a fit buying all these Marilyn boxes, which was probably the most common print. But I bought a box in every size, and I can't bear to put anything in them. They're just there, like shoe boxes. They're empty boxes with Marilyn's picture on them? Yeah. And well, they didn't have them in the colour that I wanted, so I just kept buying them off different stalls, hoping I'd come up with a red one. And I never did. I got green ones, yellow ones, brown ones, blue ones. Never got the red one, but it just totally affected me in a shopping sense. And I always bought all kinds of rubbish. But now, after the exhibition's finished, all of those boxes are in thrift shops for like two pounds a box. It's like all the old ones in down in the show. They were dearer than that. He did this one sculpture. Called it Invisible Sculpture. And Ari, you know, Ari, you went, when you first came to New York, you went to Area, right? The yeah. Club. He was there at Area. Mm -hmm. And Madonna was there as well. She was doing, um, John Claude Van Damme. No, she was doing, uh, she was rolling around on a bed doing like a virgin, but at that time, she wasn't even famous. Mm -hmm. And there was no alcohol. Uh -huh. I didn't even realise, I didn't even know what drugs were, in the, in the words of Morrissey. That's right. And I couldn't believe everyone was so happy and bouncing around on water from a fountain. Mm -hmm. And everything was day glow, and everyone was like really into the day glow. Everyone they were off running their into the tits. Together. They were just off their tits on NDMA, and they were really, really gushing and happy and having a good time. And I was thinking, this on Evian water? So we left. But Andy Warhol was there, and so was Diana Ross, and that was probably... I kind of like being, I wasn't snotty, I was just stupid. I didn't care about Andy Warhol, he was just an old geezer and a bad way to me then. You know, sometimes people, well, he wasn't as fashionable toward, you know, during certain periods maybe, in the 70s or the 80s or whatever. And he died in 87, so then it's like once he's gone, then people realize, you know, what they lost. But a lot of times people get concerned about what's fashionable at the moment, or, you know, what's hot, or what they think is trendy at the moment. New York would never have become the place that it is without him there, uh, because I think every freak could pack a makeup bag and go there, at least with the hope of well, meeting for him. me, nightlife, like when he died, it sort of marked this, this kind of point in time of New York nightlife. I moved there in 83 and I would go to Danceteria and Area and the Palladium. Did you see him around? I never ever saw him once in person. I'm like how the only can person. That happen in I, New York City? I lived, the dorm I lived in, the building I lived in, was on 31 Union Square and his old factory was 33 Union Square where he got shot. And then his new factory was on the corner like half a block away. But for some reason, I didn't pay attention to him. I was stupid as well because I remember kids who went to my 
who I went to school with, they would come back with signed interview magazines. They said, oh, we met Andy Warhol, and he signed this for us, and we went to the factory. And I was just stupid for some reason. I didn't pay as much attention to it. I was more into, like, you know, bleaching my hair or dyeing my hair or going to the store trash and vaudeville or going to see bands play at Danceteria or... It's almost a big achievement not to have seen him, because everybody... It's, right, I mean, I think I'm the only person, especially considering the kind of... Um, I think... I'm not going to have one. You're not going to have one. Thank you. Can I try your thing? Mm -hmm. What is this? Feta or something? It's fish balls. Oh, it is? Oh, salted fish balls. They make it from the balls of the fish, or... Oh, I think it is the balls of the fish. But it's quite an achievement to be in New York and not actually see him. Especially now that he's had such such an influence on me and my work that um, it's kind of more extreme almost in a way that I remember the um, the day he died. Um, I was with. Um, I thought it was a joke. I thought someone was joking. I can't imagine he's dead. I thought it was a mistake when I heard it, but the same with like Princess Diana, I remember I came home and it was on the news, it said she was in an accident and I thought, okay, well, you know, that's too bad, she'll be better or whatever, and then when I saw it an hour later, and they said that she was dead, it was, um... Were you shocked? I was I was really totally shocked. shocked, I mean, I was really shocked. It was a Saturday night, I think, it was summer It was, was Saturday night, yeah. it was Saturday night, I remember an hour. it, when I came home. It was kind of late, because I remember it was like... Maybe 10 o'clock in New York time or something. I mean, it must have happened late. Michael Lowe phoned me from New York to say Lady Diana's been in an accident. It was the early hours of the morning, and I w I'm not even into the Royals. No. I mean, I do have something in common with Lady Diana. Which is, you went to the same colonicist. Do you colonic call therapist. Colonic therapist. Yes, I have. Colonicist is not a word, right? Um, colonic irrigationist. Okay. Yeah, but you're the one who um, introduced me to colonics and to Vivian Westwood, so it's like, you know. Colonics, Vivian Westwood. And Joey Arias introduced us. Well, that's just a lot about Joey Arias. Mm -hmm. I, I wonder if anybody in England remembers of Joey Arias. Yeah, I don't know if anyone remembers who he is, because he should get back here before his knees give in, shouldn't he? Him and Ray Joey Arias. here, right? Yeah, they did a big stint at the Freedom Bar in Wardour Street, and it was standing room only. Had you heard of them before that, or...? <sighs> yeah. I, th I don't know how I'd heard of them, but, um... I mean, obviously, you know, when I'm in New York, I'll spend every night watching, because I do actually think he's talented, which is, um... It's very, very difficult to get him to go and see somebody's show, because I've seen most shows, right. and I've also done most shows on right. a stage and in right. taxis. Right. Uh -huh. But it's difficult to get to go see somebody's show, but I was very glad I went to see Joey's show. And I wish that somebody, would, with, with the finance and common sense, would bring Joey Arias over to London, because I do think the fact that he's... I think it's so dismissive to describe him as um, a drag act, because he's not a drag act. He actually becomes that person that sings those songs. Well, he's very talented, so... Kiki and Herb, who I saw last night, Justin Bond, plays Kiki, who is a, this, this sort of character that Justin has created. And it's not really a drug act, it's, it's uh, Kiki is sort of this But when of... I heard that it was shit, I didn't take any notice, it's just I had to work. So, um, you know, if you stop doing things that you don't want to do, when you have to do interviews, right. you really would rather go and see something else, right. and people say it's crap, you feel a bit better. It, I'm sure it wasn't, really, but really good. It. It's really good. I mean, you'll go see it. It's the, uh, Does it sell out? Um, it was full. Yeah, I mean, it was totally full in the theatre. Um, I took a bunch of pictures, I have to pick them up. Uh, tonight, they're ready tonight, but um, Justin is an amazing performer, I mean, it's, he, he's in drag as a female, but it's not drag, and it's not, it's really a character, Kiki, and he creates this whole history for this character, Kiki, she's this kind of like, very boozy, kind of 70-year-old lounge singer, but she sings everything from, uh, what's that Kate Bush song, Moments of Pleasure, to uh, standards, to um, a Pink Floyd song, to a Radiohead song, but all like in these lounge versions. But the story is amazing, and Justin is so. So they tell a story. Not so much it tells the story of Kiki and Herb, and you know. Kiki. Is it the same every night? Um, they do different shows, so it's. I mean, each they write. They probably do two different shows a year, so when they do that show, it runs they for about a month. That show. But it's very difficult to go and see somebody, because usually if I go and see somebody, yeah, but the thing I'll is, go a few nights. I'll the, do the same show every night, but I realize that when I went into show business, or making a show of myself for a job, 
it's all about repetition. And mm -hmm. since I realised the frustration of that, I've talked to a lot of people who do fairly ordinary things, and everything's about repetition. Mm -hmm. Everybody who does anything has to repeat it. And I it's a job. That, yeah, I thought when you Every, went into no. the arts, no, it's a, it's all I don't a think job. you have to repeat things. You yeah, do a picture and it's one thing, and you do another picture, it's another thing. But nobody like, says to you, oh, do the joy picture again. No, but they do. do. They? People want the same thing. People say, oh, you be, if you become known for one thing, then people want the same thing. Like Andy Warhol, I read this like very uh, serious interview with him, and he was just saying, his response to everything, he said, oh, I should have just kept painting the Campbell soup cans, because that's all everybody ever wanted. He said you find you, you end up painting one picture. Yeah, he said you end up painting one picture they could have in done your life. Different varieties of soup, yeah. and then done Heinz soup as well, and everybody. Or just the, he said everybody wants a Campbell soup one, and it's like um, people like the familiar. Um, art is work like anything else. Making songs is work. Like if you go see, I saw the Pet Shop Boys four times on this past tour. So if you go, I was taking photos of them. Um, and the last time I saw them was in Paris, and that they actually changed their set a bit. Like they cut songs off and they added songs, and then it was That's great. Such a thrill! That I'll was see really any good. thrill you're allowed to cut a song. But Everyone's waiting for you to no, do no. it. One of these days, I'm not going to do spin me round. Well, they the, the last tour was good because they opened up with um, West End Girls. That was the first mm -hmm. song they did, and Neil said Neil Tennant said that um, he said, "Okay, here it is." He said, "We got that one out of the way. You should open up with you spin me round." I've done it, and everyone uh -huh. laughed. No, not really. Oh, right. They're like, okay. They want me to do it 14 times. Mm -hmm. But I went to see Joan Rivers, um, I think it was at the Drury Lane Theatre. And I went one night, and I really would like to have gone again, but I was sure she was going to tell the same jokes every night. And it's very frustrating to do the same thing every night, but after the third night, you've got to keep doing the same thing, otherwise you fall asleep. Mm -hmm. You do it in your sleep. Mm -hmm. But there is no such thing as free reign on... Creativity. I mean, I bet people still wait for Madonna to do Like a Virgin. Well, she should have opened up that last tour she did was terrible. She should have opened up with, like, oh, yeah. physical attraction or, like, she should have opened up with Lucky Star. She should have... Got to be allowed to do what you want eventually. Yeah. And she must feel so great being... She can go, oh, fuck off, I'm going to do Kate no, Bush's I mean, Black Catalog. She sh well, it would have been interesting if she would have done that, but I didn't like that last show at all. I, didn't think I saw it, it on video. Yeah, I saw it in person at the Artistic expression, but then again, we're guilty of the same thing. Yeah, but... Oh, thank you. That potato plate's very hot. Okay. okay. Thanks a lot. If I went to see Jennifer Lopez and she didn't do... Waiting for Tonight. What does she do? Waiting for Tonight. She does that song, Play. Um, wait, uh, but money, uh, love don't cost a thing. Yeah, if she didn't do that, I'd be really disappointed. So I'm just as guilty. Uh-huh. Absolutely guilty, but I think it makes you nutty in the end. Of course, that hasn't happened to me yet. So, wait, you, are you working on a new record now, or what are you doing? I'm trying to work on a new record, but and you're working. And with... it's it's stimulating to work on a new record, but people want the old thing again and again and again, and it's a job like any other. I did think like a fool mm -hmm. when I was a small child. When you were artistic or crazy, you could do whatever you wanted to do, and you do, and then all of a sudden everybody likes something you do, and you got to repeat it. Mm -hmm. Well, people like the familiar thing. When you go see a performance, when you go see a pop show, you want to hear the familiar thing. I actually sometimes like to be really surprised and shocked. Sometimes uh, some things have shocked me. I like to be shocked. You saw the Sex Pistols back in the day, right? I saw them uh, probably about shocking? the third or fourth gig. No, I didn't no? think it was shocking because oh. I expect them expected them to be a lot wilder and look better and they didn't they look like a rock group but i did like them i did like um at the time johnny rotten i thought he was great and i thought the characters of the band were great and of course it was linked in some way to vivian westwood right and as you well know i don't care what she does i think it's all fabulous even if i don't get it mm -hmm. so i, I kind of liked them i saw them twice and then i didn't want to see them again i wanted mm -hmm. to go see them on this um jubilee they're playing tour. tonight i think it's tonight. I think so. I would have liked to have gone and seen them, but there was no sort of uh, VIP area or anything. And uh, I saw them like five years ago in Seattle when they did the reunion tour, but uh, it wasn't good. I think The Cure is playing tonight and The Sex Pistols. The Cure is playing in Hyde Park near your house. At night time? Tonight. It's like Eaten Alive by Mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't really like to go and see people perform. I was going to go and see Deborah Harry. 
because I think now that Andy Warhol's dead, she impresses me about New York, because New York always impresses me more than, I mean, there's nowhere really else in America that I'm even interested in. Every time we've been to America, it's only a duration test so we can get to New York, and then it's really, really good. I also find myself becoming a real Anglophile in the last couple of months, really English and snobbish about being English, because it, we are a completely different culture. Absolutely. Totally different. I find... I mean, I left New York in the middle of June, and I went to Barcelona, then to Amsterdam, then to Paris, then to Berlin, then to Munich, then back to Berlin, and then to London, and then I leave and go back to Berlin on Monday, and then next week I'll be in Barcelona. But it's sort of funny. It's a national thing. Here. Exactly. Um, Your passport was at the Old Testament. Yeah, but the problem now with passports is when you come into the European Union, you get stamped once. So it's sort of like... It's not as glamorous. You don't... Yeah, I mean... Since I really started traveling a lot, that's after the European Union thing. So you don't get you don't get all these passport stamps. I mean, I would have gone through a couple passports. I mean, it's still pretty well stamped. Oh, I have such a drama with passport. Oh, such a drama. Why? Because Lynn, the wife, has got a passport, obviously. Mm -hmm. I've got a passport, and we go through it together, husband and wife, they go, which one's which? And they look similar. In yeah, picture, and right? it's the same fucking thing. Oh dear. Every damn time. No cavity uh, searches or anything? No, and we were stopped at San Francisco Airport on the way home to England, and they pulled us out of the queue for a special body search. I thought, all right, go ahead. They didn't do a special body search, they just put magnets all over us and went right through our bags, and they were saying... Magnets? The, yeah, like, um, oh, the see metal if we had right, bombs right. strapped to our underwear. Mm -hmm. I never get called, like, a lot of times now, if you're traveling in America, they have that random, um, random uh, check, like you'd be waiting to get on the plane, and they just pull people out of the line and say, can we check your bag or whatever? But they My never bag. check me. I, I just think. unzip it, go into the airport, go mm -hmm. straight through the fucking bag. But the thing that really frustrates me is while I'm standing there and they're going through my Chanel makeup, terrorists are walking past laughing, going, oh, thank you. Uh -huh. oh. And it's a waste of time because curiosity, if they're just a bit really curious, can we look in your bag? Mm -hmm. That would be fine. I'd even clean it for them. Uh -huh. But they just want to look in my bag and they waste so much time as if I'm going to take a fucking bomb. Maybe they want to know your beauty secrets. Maybe, Maybe they do, but I'm not carrying those in my bag. That's right. They're in Harley Street. That's right. But um, they just get me every time I get a, I'm going to get a passport photograph taken because my passport photographs are really quite a glamorous one, full makeup and everything. Oh, really? And it just stops them. The only thing Who that took it? Uh, Went well, in a booth. It took oh. about four hours getting ready. Right. right. But it's such a lovely passport photograph. I could use it on an album cover. It's such mm -hmm. a gorgeous passport photograph. Wait, what's the name of your new album? Evolution. We should use it for that, maybe. Or is it like Gaffer's making something, right? Yeah, he's done various covers, and we're going to probably use Pierre and Gilles to try one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to reject a few ideas. Mm -hmm. But um, it's just the experience of working with different people. But the passport photograph that I've got is me in full makeup and everything. And I go through passport control. It's like, oh, you're having a laugh. You both got the same passport. No, we haven't. Look, one's got black hair, one's got blonde hair. Who's blonde, Lynn? Yeah, she's oh, blonde. she's blonde, right. I, I, and then there's the... One time I went through, because I never travel without makeup. Mm -hmm. Well, I never really do much without makeup, but... Um, you look good in makeup. What's the matter with you? What's the matter? One time I came back from Australia after probably... I, I thought it was a four-day flight. It was about a 22-hour flight from Australia. And I didn't have any makeup on, and they took the passport. And we went through customs, and they pulled us over at customs. He looked at my passport, and he went, You should pull yourself together. Because I didn't make up on. Oh. You should pull yourself together. I was so offended. Who said that? Here? Yeah, one of the customs Coming officials. Back. Yeah, and I, cause he said, You should pull yourself together because I looked like a car crash. And I really wanted to complain because I wasn't glamorous enough, glamorous enough to pass customs judgment. So they pulled me out and looked at the passport. I really went, like, you should pull yourself together. Oh dear. But you know, when I die, someone can auction off my passport. I won't be angry. You like your food? Um, good, pretty good. You like yours? It's alright. 
um, this guy I know is a, um, a Marcel Duchamp scholar, and so he went to the Philadelphia Museum where they have all um, all of his archives, and he was going through the archives, and he found behind in the file drawer what I'm going to find and how you see. I'm having a potato. It's not in the zone. Barry Sears will not be happy about that. When I go for my colonic, I'm going to say, oops, honey, you ate a potato, a little mm -hmm. potato. Oops, there it is. I'll but chew it really well. You'll never know. I'll disguise it as a Snickers bar. Mm -hmm. But he found a passport of Marcel Duchamp that had fallen behind in the thing. And he could have kept it, but he gave it back to the people at the museum. But someone else I know, they were working in a store, and Cher came in and left her American Express card there. Oh, right. And just to have a card that just said Cher, American Express card that just says the four letter Cher on it, I thought the two objects framed together, Marcel Duchamp's passport with Cher's American Express card, would have been great. But of course, they, uh, the girl who worked in the store didn't keep it. She thought that she was going to meet Cher. And so give about the American Express card. Rob Calametti, her boyfriend at the time, the bagel boy, came in to pick it up. Called her at the bakery. Remember the bagel boy? They mm -hmm. called him. I think everybody should have a bagel boy. Yeah, why not? At least one. A bagel boy in every port. Tim, there's so much garlic in this food. We are done for. Uh oh. That's no yeah. making out tonight. No making out. Not even getting past first base. Uh oh. Honey, there's a man in drag. Where? Look. Where? Look, at, look come here. Lean over. Yeah. Oh. See? See, we're in the right restaurant. Mm -hmm. I'm actually still shocked by things like that. Females are male ones. Like, Why? It, it, it always seems male to female is sort of like... Thank oh. you. Could I get another Casual Hall please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chocolate polenta cake. Yeah, I think I want the same thing. The females are male ones. Female to male is... The male to female is sort of like... It, it doesn't... It seems it's like... five minutes ago. Yeah. But like the female to male ones are amazing. It was like a whole documentary about this whole community of them, and then they would have relationships like the, um, he, you know, she became he, and then some were like, like two guys, once they both, they both changed into being men, and then they were a couple. Lesbians? Yeah. No, not lesbians. What are they? Fags. Gay men? Two fags. Oh, they sorry. were. That's they, like double cross-dressing, really, isn't it? But then, yeah, it's kind of amazing, right? And then it's the other very one, complex issue. yeah. The other one had a. Um, she became a male, and then her girlfriend was a was a male to female. Puts my head in a spin. I right know it's kind of amazing. It spins me right round. Exactly. It does. It. I just swell. But the first night when I got to Can Paris, you I was what? I don't know. No, when I first got there, I turned on the TV and I was going to go out, and it was like midnight, and I thought, should I go into town? <laughs> I thought, wait a minute. It was in English. It was a, an hour-long documentary about female to male transsexuals, and I thought there's no way I'm going out. It was like the first transsexual I ever met was a female to male. I was like 15 years old, and this mm -hmm. guy called Lou, and he was so handsome. He was dark, very Italian-looking, blue eyes, and everything. And he told me one day he used to be a woman. Going, <laughs> and then I realised it's true. In Liverpool, was mm -hmm. this? There was this couple called Lou and Layla. And uh -huh. Layla was a girl, and Lou was a boy. But really, Lou was a girl who changed into a boy. And Layla was a boy who changed into a girl, so they kind of swapped gender. But you wouldn't have known. You would never have known, especially not when you were 14. Absolutely. You don't really think about it. I didn't even register. Lynn knew. Lynn knew right away. Really? They tell Lynn she knew right away. She knew there was something odd about them. Lynn's more perceptive in that way. Yeah, and I just thought, how can this be? How can a woman suddenly grow this huge beard? And you know, hair all over her body, and have a deep voice, and lift heavy concrete all over the place. But that was my eye opener onto the world. It's a crazy world, really. It's a mixed up. Isn't it amazing what a little world. pill can do? Just a little pill, and you can grow a beard, or a little little pill, and you can grow a boob. Mm -hmm. And if you mix them both up, who knows what would happen? Can you imagine? 
taking the testosterone and the estrogen, estrogen. Uh -huh. so they wouldn't know whether it was common or gabby. Mm -hmm. Or you could do one three days a week or the other four days a week and you could see what happened. You'd probably end up back at square one, actually, just with a load of pills. Maybe they cancel each other out. Mm. What if you get, like, a, if, you know how people like have spikes? Spike people's drinks with, you know, drugs. I slept on a hormone patch once. Oh. And how was it? It was on me. I, we, I was traveling and somebody had a hormone patch and a transsexual. But they were using um, patches. I don't, I don't actually know the ins and outs because it was a very mysterious girl. Mm -hmm. Lady boy. I was working with, but she had a hormone patch on, obviously, because she couldn't get the hormones while we were travelling, and we were on the tour bus, and I slept on the hormone patch, probably for two days, and couldn't get a shower, we were going from town to town and doing these really quick shows, and I felt really strange on the hormone patch, and then I found out, I thought it was a nicotine, it was like a nicotine patch, and it was a hormone patch, and after 24 hours, I kept suddenly bursting into tears, because they do that, they go a bit emotional, right. Really. But I'm good on them. I think it's really good. Sure so. Well, you know, we buy all the vitamins in the world and we never see a result. At least if you take a hormone, yeah. you can see a result. What if you result. spike somebody's drink with, with it? It'd take know. a while, wouldn't it? But they get yeah. very emotional and very <laughs> difficult to live with. That was never really my bag, would you believe? Never. Never what? for a minute thought I wanted to grow up and be a girl. Never no. for a minute was quite happy with the whole rotten basket. Didn't Morrissey want to though or something? Or? Well, once he did say he wanted it all, he wanted it all. I want the vision of tights, I want the miniskirt. Maybe he was joking at the time, but at, at that time it quite shocked me. Where is Morrissey? We need him now. Like if you look at the state of... of, of Britney the, Spears is probably Morrissey. Maybe. Or who's that other one that goes... Da, 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 da. Shakira. That's probably Morrissey. Is that Morrissey, do you think? I don't know, but he's disappeared. I miss him. Yeah. I really miss him. We need Morrissey. <laughs> Medical science is quite incredible. Mm -hmm. But you know what? The developments we've made, you can send a fucking man to the moon, but you can't invent a waterproof lipstick. No? Technology is... Things that are important. What's going to send a man to the moon? What does it do for us, ultimately? You get a different view of, of the Earth and figure things out about Where have you benefited from a man being on the moon, truthfully? I'm not interested in the fucking moon. It gives a nice little light. Leave it I like where it moon. is. Yeah, yeah I like to look but at do you it. want to go to the moon? No. One event sink is going up to space. Who would want to go to outer space? I don't Parrots. like... Out of space. No, don't be stuck in one of those things. I, I, in I don't want. Uh, I don't like airplanes, so I definitely wouldn't want to be on some sort of uh, thing so far away. It's kind of interesting going to outer space. I think it's a complete be, waste of funding. Well, it would only be good if you could tell people about it after if they were like, "Oh, where'd you I go?" Mean, and you're oh, like, everyone's death, and they wouldn't believe you. What about right. those people who get? Um, Do you need a passport to go to the moon? I don't know. Yeah, I imagine I'd have hassle halfway. Show me your passport, you've got to be joking. You gotta be joking. But those people that say they've been abducted by aliens and John Ford Van Damme know really the ones who say they've been abducted by aliens. I mean, it might be true, but who's going to take you seriously if you say you're not going to believe my weekend? I saw a light in the bedroom window. You know, you're late for work on a Monday. And they go, why are you late? Or why have you cancelled your tour? You're not going to believe this. Because I went to the moon? No, I was abducted by aliens. Mm. Can you imagine trying to tell somebody that, the trauma? Especially if it happened. People out west in America, they have a lot of like alien abductions and sightings and things. And, um, and they obviously have a lot of alien interbreeding as well in the Midwest of America. But no, do you really believe them? I don't know if I believe them. Yeah, why not? I... I suspend my disbelief, but I'm not sure if I believe them because it's a great excuse if you don't turn up for an appointment, isn't it? That you were abducted by aliens? Yeah, someone says I'll meet you for dinner at 9 oh, o'clock and you it? don't show and you say, look, I'm sorry, I was abducted by aliens. It must happen. I'm not saying it must happen, but they must believe it happens. But can you imagine? I'm going to call Tim. I didn't meet him at the airport because I was abducted by aliens. I have a friend. It might happen. A friend who I saw last night used to work at a Kennedy Center, a performing center in um, 
in D.C. And he said when he was a teenager, he thought that he had an STD and he had to go to the doctor to check. But he said he couldn't tell his boss that, so he told his doctor that he had to take his sister to get an abortion. And he said that it was a great excuse because the boss would never question. He just said, I have to leave. To, I have to take my sister to get an abortion. I have said my mother's died loads of times. Now she's uh, really dead. You see, because you brought it on. Well, it's going to happen anyway. Right. You're just anticipating the events, aren't you? I mean, she's, you say things like that when you're a kid because um, I can remember when I started a band for a very, very brief period. I had a clothes shop and we needed to buy equipment and the clothes shop was since the end of punk mm-hmm. and the clothes shop was Wait, going to You and Lynn had a clothes shop, right? Yeah. In Liverpool. Yeah. And what was it called? Extremes, but we didn't actually really ever open the shop. Mm-hmm. We did sometimes, but we used to just wholesale the clothes to the Kings Are we going to get dessert or what? Yeah. They didn't take our order yet. Oh. I want dessert, sorry. Um, I'm used to wholesale the clothes to shops in the King's Road. This is in the punk days. But I needed equipment for the band badly. And we just couldn't... Well, really, we did have the money, but I had other things to spend it on. So I kind of invented a false identity and signed on for Social Security uh-huh. in a different town that I'm not going to reveal. You, and you didn't have a... a, a you have made it a different name, you mean? Yeah, sort of. Uh-huh. Kind of. It was very... It, it was a web of intrigue, but and I don't know worked. how, everyone said it wouldn't work, but it did. Mm-hmm. I, at the time, I was wearing rubber cap suits and green makeup and things, but anyway, I went to this small, sleepy country place and signed on the Social Security, but I, ne- I only did it for four weeks to get the Social Security benefit, mm-hmm. and I did it for four weeks, but I was never on time, and I'd be like a day late, and I'd say, I'm sorry my mother died, and they feel sorry for me the first time, and then i go in the next week and go, sorry my mother died. And they go, she died last week, and I say, no, she didn't die. She was on a life support machine, and she was near death. But this week, she really has died. <laughs> and I sort of tied myself up, and I did do it. And then I said, no, this mother was buried. In four weeks, I did it. It's not that bad. It probably a total for some of £150 for the synthesizer that we needed. And um, I really prostituted myself for music there. And then I? did you write, what song did you write with the synthesizer? We didn't write any because oh. we didn't even know how to turn it oh. on because they weren't even real musicians and it was a synthesizer. Was we thought Steve there at this no. point? No, oh, we before. thought you turned it on and it would go... And I could do Giorgio Moroder, but it wasn't. You had a big manual to read. Oh, dear. So we kind of abandoned it. You could have become Donna Summer, right? No, I thought you got the synthesizer. Here's a switch because everyone used to say disco music's really easy. You just hit a switch and it does it for you. Yeah. So we got this really quite fancy synthesizer at the time and we switched it on and nothing happened so we pushed the lever and it went and we thought if we shake it about a bit it never did but I never went back to social security I felt kind of cheated and after her mother had died four times she didn't die four times she died but no she wasn't dead they put on a life support machine oh this is later on the second week she didn't die the previous week but this time she's actually dead, but they're just keeping her alive with intravenous fluids. And I knew that gave me space for the third week that she died, actually died. But then the fourth week she was at the funeral. I was at the funeral. Oh, what was the long process? I knew I was pushing it. I knew they didn't even listen to what I said because I was wearing really green lipstick. It was in Liverpool Heights. Oh. We really need chocolate. We need it right now. Oh, uh-huh. Two chocolate cakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, can I, I want to try the other one. I want the, oh. um, we both want the chocolate, but I want this one as well. We're going to share the other one. So we both, like we're not sharing yes. anything to do with chocolate. You're, you're getting the chocolate, getting I'm ready. getting the chocolate, okay. and we're going to share the I'm already. Okay. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so that was my escapade with the government. For a synthesizer, a call. I got unemployment for a while. I mean, in the state you call it unemployment. I got fired from my job, so... I was employed. I was self-employed. Oh, it was terrible. I just felt like a... I really did feel like a criminal. Did Courtney Love used to come into that store? Yeah. That's what Courtney Love used to shout faggot in the streets at me. And she would call you faggot. so embarrassing. And who, who was she at that time? She was just this girl with money. She was like a groupie. You know, there was the groups, the Teardrop Explodes, uh-huh. and Echo and the Bunny Man, and Dead or Alive. 
when Dead or Alive then we were Nightmares in Wax. Uh -huh. Actually, I would quite often invent names because the, mm -hmm. the music papers would be centred on the Liverpool scene. Mm -hmm. And I had to look like I was busy, so I'd say I was in a band and I'd just make up a name. Right. I often wonder if anybody out there in the world has got any of the press clippings, because sometimes I do interviews and just talk shite. Right. The people who wait for the gig or the record. Nightmares and Wax, you had records though, as right? Yeah, there was one okay. record, but then there's another one. I think we were called Rainbows over Nagasaki, and then we were called Sex and Violence. And another one we will call Sudden, not Sudden Death Cults, they use that name as Sudden Death by, just ridiculous names. But Corny Love was like, um, she must have been about 40 then. I think she was 30. No, she said she was like 16, but yeah. she was like this kind of hippie girl, and the punk movement in Liverpool was very, very snobby. And of course, when Echo and the Bunnymen and myself we were making bands, punk was really over, we were just strange people. And she'd be on the street in the morning and I was working in my clothes shop. And it was very, very difficult to get from my flat, which was my apartment at that time, into the city centre. But I discovered Sony Walkmans very early. Mm -hmm. And they would just, you just didn't hear the abuse. Mm -hmm. You do, you put the Walkman on and I'd be wearing Little Vivian Westwood nappies mm -hmm. and T-shirts had all this hair covered in red rags with black contact lenses and I would walk like a robot to work every day. 10.30 in the morning, it was, you know, quite a disturbing sight to see me at that time in the morning. And I always used to, particularly on a Saturday, for some reason she was always around this area, Matthew Street, on a Saturday. And I knew that if I got down the previous street, Church Street, without being killed, I was home and dry almost. Mm -hmm. I could just keep my head down and get to the shop, but I think, please don't let that fucking bitch be outside. Because I'd hear her through the walkman. Mm -hmm. Faggot! Faggot! Fucking weirdo! Shouting on the street. But when she did it? that, nothing, because I just wanted right. to get to work. I was very ladylike about mm -hmm. it. I'd just keep walking and uh -huh. go to work. I used to think, I hope you die of uterine cancer. Uh -huh. But uh, it drew so much attention to me in the last five yard dash. At that time, just the last five yards home and dry. I just want to get in the building, and then I was okay because that was my territory. What's home and dry mean? It means safe or yes, yeah, safe right, in your territory. Right, in my right. territory, people were so intimidated they didn't bother me. Once I was in my shop, no one really came in and hassled. Once I was in the shop, they'd come and look outside through the window, but abuse was non-existent. And also, I was surrounded by a lot of very, very heavy people. Mm -hmm. I thought about it. I had an entourage of probably murderers. Actually, a couple did turn out to be murderers at that time, but I had this entourage of murderers and club bouncers and things like that that would hang around me. Why? I don't know. I was such a stupid kid, you know. I really used to look at the glamorous side of life. I used to look at the fashion world and the celebrity world. And I, I always used to believe that everybody had everything and there was no need to be a mess. And I've met so many people who were just drooling and their eyes are... I just can't really take anybody seriously in that condition. Mm -hmm. It was very rarely that I was off my tits, very, very rarely, and I didn't enjoy it at all when I was. I used to be, but I quit drinking like 10 years ago, so I don't remember. I used to go through such... There was a period in um, the late 80s... Your bunny, your... ...where E became the thing, and I resisted for ages, and I tried ecstasy a couple of times. Just like on a Thursday night, I'd have half an E. And I'd still be flying on the Saturday, and I'd go on these absolutely dangerous shopping sprees. So dangerous. I think I spent £98,000 in the Chanel shop in Sloan Street. And I wasn't on the E at that time. The E was on the You're Thursday. Sure coming, but down. coming down, I came right up in Chanel. And, um, off the e up in Chanel. and then on the Monday, I'd look at all the stuff and see the credit card bill and think, what have you done? And I'd stay in bed till Thursday and take another one and think, who cares? I think 98,000 in Chanel on a Thursday, no, Saturday, Saturday afternoon. They closed the shop, and the best thing was, I had such an entourage of freaks with me. They closed the shop, and George Hamilton was dating Elizabeth Taylor at the time. It's George Hamilton, the one who's baked alive, he's yeah. like, say, Brad, huh? and they wouldn't let him in. They held him outside, because I had the whole of the Chanel shop's attention, and they were bringing me shoes. It was like Julia Roberts and Pretty Woman. That's great. But I didn't like it, and now occasionally I'll meet someone and I'll realise that the pupils are kind of a bit funny. The people what? The pupils are a bit odd when they're having a conversation with you, and it, I just lose interest, really. Or if they can't stop dancing, they're, they're talking to you, but they're still moving in place. I was horrified when I read about Kevin O'Coin, the makeup artist, uh -huh. who just died. He was nice. 
truth to see him. And they were saying he was so out of it when he was doing jobs, he'd black out in the middle of your eyebrow and it would take two hours to revive him. From what? From Vicodin. The big in America, Vicodin, yeah. And he'd he have to be rushed to hospital for two hours and then they bring him back and he'd do the other eyebrow. And what astounds me is how that just doesn't leak out until you're dead. Mm-hmm. But I guess he had reason because he was sick. There must be... I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting old. I'm getting older too. Mm. Like Stevie Nicks. Yeah, that deep is live thing. It's strange. Oh. What a scream is live, I called it. Okay, well, first of all, it starts with Celine Dion playing air guitar and goose stepping across the stage to an ACDC song with, oh. no, with no hint of irony. I mean, she was like, the, she was ready to get down. And she looked so fucking stupid yeah. while she was doing it as That's well. That's what I mean, but she, she was totally into it like it was, um, like she was, you know, rock and roll. Oh, yeah. But when she did the other one, the Who's first that one? one with Aretha? With the tits up here and the glasses and the shoes up here. You just shine. Anastasia. Anastasia. She's like squashed with these glasses and boobs and I met, everything. I met her a couple of months ago in New York. I went to this press thing. My friend is a writer and it was at the top of the Sony building. So I went just because I wanted to see the view of the Sony building. And I oh, met sorry. her. Anastasia. <laughs> oh dear. There was Mary J. Blige doing... Um, oh, uh... It Love is a, a Battlefield. The Pat Benatar song with Shakira. Rice. Mm. Those shows are so strange. Cher. With Cindy Lauper. Uh-huh. I went Cindy Lauper was going up to at the end to try and hug her. You could tell Cher was like, get away, watch the work, watch the work. <laughs> you went to see Britney, didn't you? I went to see Britney a couple months ago at the garden. I think she's like 48 years old. I don't she think really, she, her best talent is her hair. The way the way her hair is cut and the way it moves, that's her biggest talent, I think. What do you mean the way it moves? It's not her own hair. I know, but I'm saying whoever whoever did it or whatever they I mean, it's good. The hair is the hair is her best talent. She doesn't sing, she lip syncs the entire show, so it's very odd. Do you think be, she's a virgin? No. My back's so bad. I need to do some stretching. I don't know whether to... He's cute. Fish. I was only joking. Oh dear. Because these people here talking about pornography. I like eavesdropping on conversations. Oh really? Don't you like to do that? Ever? Yeah, sometimes. I like to sometimes just hear some things that people say on the street. Sometimes you'll be somewhere and you'll just hear like... Um, I don't know. So you'll just hear this little snippet of someone's life. It's just very bizarre. They're talking about the difference between pornography and erotica. Pornography is good, erotica is bad. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, or sometimes I stand, like in New York, I'll just stand on the corner. And you get so used to being with all these people, and I'll just stand and I'll look and I just think, I don't know a single one of you human beings. I'll stand there for five minutes and watch all these human beings pass by me, and I just think, I don't know a single one of you people. Yeah, but you kind of like stop and see Joan Rivers coming out of her apartment. Yeah. And you'll turn a corner, and who was it? That Kennedy that wrapped himself around the island. Oh, John F. Kennedy. You, see, you live right near his apartment. He used to live, yeah. Like that. Well, I noticed this guy, I remember coming home, and I noticed this guy had really good legs. He had a, like a bike and good legs, and I thought, oh, nice legs, because most guys don't have good legs. And then when I got closer, it turned around, it was him. I used to live a couple doors down, so I used to see them in the neighborhood. You get excited when you see a celebrity. The last, per- on it very the last person I got excited to see was um, Dave, the guy who plays David on Six Feet Under. It's an American oh, okay, TV yeah. show at my friend's house. You my friend's, excited? It was kind of, kind of, I mean, my Have you ever lost it when you see the celebrity? Um, maybe but I saw when I saw Madonna maybe 15 years ago. Did you lose it? I said to her. Remember we went to the theater and she was right there. Yeah, and at, we just uh, said, right. Did you lose it? No. But, um, Did you get a little flutter and you told me inside? A little bit. Certain people have, you know, people that maybe you admire, you meet them and so you feel like you want to, 
you get excited to meet them or something. Did you go and speak to her when you saw her in like 15 years ago? Madonna, yeah, in front of the Whitney Museum. It was the most pathetic thing. What um, did you say? She was, she, was going to look at, she was going to look at art. The museum was closed. A friend of mine worked there and told me she was coming, so I was standing out front. Oh, no, like and, a stalker. Yeah, absolutely. You could have shot her. I know. There was, a couple, the there was a couple paparazzis there. Yeah, and you were there looking. She had on like slick blonde hair, black glasses, and like a really long, bl like dark purple velvet coat, a cloak. And she walked right by me, and I put my hand on her shoulder, oh and I said, God. I said, Damn. listen, this is really pathetic. Not you. I said, you're great. And she just totally kept walking and ignored me. You're great. That's you're great. so bad, is it? Yeah. I mean, you don't know what to say. It's like, I mean, that's the pathetic thing about people who are like celebrities, because sometimes you want to say something to them. You just don't know what to say. Yeah, you don't know what to say. And it's like, well, they're just a human being who happens to be famous. And then everyone wants like a piece of them or wants to say something to them. So it's a little, sometimes it's so stupid. And they've heard it all. Oh, of course. They're like, thanks. And she didn't even say thanks. She didn't stop. She didn't miss a stride. She kept walking. She was and with her brother. I saw her at the time of the, I've seen her a lot around London because we live in, close neighborhood for a while she was around my neighborhood but then she bought somewhere else but uh, I never wanted to speak to her I did one particular day we were going to buy furniture in this store that's on the corner of um, I'm not going to say but I had on a Madonna jewel t-shirt and I went rushing into the shop out of a cab and there she was walking by it's and, and I've oh, no. been wearing it at the gym and I just covered the right. t-shirt because I just thought, I can't believe this. She is. Right. She come out of the same furniture store. Did she see the shirt or? Well, she wouldn't have missed me, would right. she? Like, no, me. Right. But I just, right. but that time you were at the theatre as well, I could hear people going up to go, oh, your new album is so mad. Mm -hmm. And stuff, and she's thinking, fuck off. Mm -hmm. I know that they think that. Yeah, because we were meeting Joey Arias there because I got to take it yeah, to Joey's an old friend of hers. And Joey was, yeah. Your Joey album's was, so hot. That was like the ray of light time. It's funny when people come and done like that. You feel for them. But it's best to shut up and go home. Mm -hmm. Or just follow them. Um, it's sort of like, if it doesn't happen, it's, it's sort of like the same thing in real life. If you see someone and you're both attracted to each other and then you speak to each other, it's fine. Or if you have a mutual friend, it's fine. Or if you're working together. How could someone but, have a conversation without Madonna, with Madonna without mentioning her work and the effect it's had on modern culture? And she's on the TV all the time, so she might as well live in your house. Right. Sometimes I actually feel, or I have felt, particularly in New York when Ray of Light came out, that she actually was living in our hotel room because that fucking record... What was the one with the long black wig? I always remember Frozen. reference by the hairdo. Frozen. Yeah. And she was like, it was on heavy rotation because it was new, and I really felt like she was staying at the hotel with us in the room, and then we went to the theatre and saw her, and I just thought, oh, I'm so sick of seeing you. But just give her a space, you know. Well, I hope she does something interesting in here. She will, I'm sure. She's done a lot. It's hot in here. Should we wrap up and go? Yeah, I need some fresh air. I want to go pick up my pictures. And then we can go wherever. We'll go see that sex business. Go to a place where it's quiet and dry. Talk about fresh I'm going to get another cosmopolitan and be plastered because okay. I've had a very stressful week. I don't want to work anymore. Oh, this Vivian Westwood thing. That's the first time it's worked. twisting me around. <laughs> and you're trying to go with it. And I didn't. Spinning around. I am, I'm spinning around. <laughs> would you ex get excited so Kylie? Not at all. I wouldn't get excited. She either. doesn't excite me. I'd get much more excited if I saw Wendy James. I see her all the time. I, I know, get but excited she's to every me. time. I did a Wendy James is more of a star than Kylie Minogue. I did a, a TV program and it was about music of the 80s and I suddenly in the middle of the interview went, why aren't you featuring Transvision Band? They were not, right? Went, the research just went quiet, I said, but they had a lot of hits. They actually did have, uh, as far as I know, they had mm -hmm. more than two hits. Absolutely. In the 80s. And they were just completely dismissed. And the research went, you know, that was a really good idea. And it was an oversight on our part mm -hmm. not to have featured them. Yeah, but it's like if you look at Garbage, the band Garbage or Hole, it's sort of like they're definitely influenced by Trent. She was just so important. Yep, absolutely. And she was so fabulous. And she yep. was such a star. And yep. her records were so great. That, honest to God. 
I did kind of make a fool of myself when I met Wendy James because I told her all about you because you'd interviewed her when you were I, When I wanted to be a, an inter, a, a journalist like 20 and years ago. And she came into the shop where I was sitting with the owner and I just like unraveled. Mm -hmm. completely. And I knew I was unraveling, but I just thought... Oh wait, she lives in your neighborhood, right? Yeah. And I knew at the time, because I was so excited because I was thinking T-shirt, Tim, autograph for Tim, because you know you have that kitsch sense of celebrity. Absolutely. And I completely unraveled like a ball of wool. Oh, and I knew you... I was doing it, and I just went with the whole... Yeah, sometimes who cares? I scared the shit out of her, I know I did. But you see her now. We saw her when we were eating lunch that day. And so I saw her in the bank last week as well. But I still get a bit of a thrill. Yeah. Well, I do, I get a big thrill when I say about... Yep. It's kind of amazing that she's... Um, people don't really know who she is, but then if people will know who, like... There wouldn't be a Courtney Love without Wendy Jane. Absolutely. Or a Shirley Manson. I don't think so. I think she was the next step from Blondie. Mm -hmm. Wendy James and Transition. You have Wendy. Debbie Harry, Wendy James, and then you have Courtney Love and there Shirley There are probably Manson. other completely non-entities in the middle, but Wendy James did snatch that idea and completely run with it, didn't she? Mm -hmm. She was fantastic. I got three of their albums in the video compilations. I I'd even all. used the same video director. Just hoping what is that oh, right. a bit of that magic would rub off. I want a Transvision Van t shirt. I just wanted to reform. That would be good. I've always seen that. Who's that guy from Seek Seek Spotman? Martin Dagville. I've always seen him around. Oh, he's he doesn't he's irritating. Me. He was at the. Um, at that New Year's Eve, we saw him at Shadow Lounge. Did he vomit all over the place or something? He was a, he was really messy and dry. He was just irritating. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it go away? Could I get another cosmopolitan, please? Sorry. And then a quick ticket to rehab. No, I wasn't excited by Seek Seek Spotnik when I saw him, but I used to kind of know him years ago. But Wendy James, I kind of don't really want to... I saw her at the cinema, and I know that she saw me, and she tried to hide because I'd unravel to try and get you a T-shirt. I thought, if I can just get Tim this T-shirt, he's not going to believe it. Cause she was going to. She wrote that note and said that she was going to yeah. give me the T-shirt. I just went with the moment, though, and completely unraveled. I knew I was doing it. I knew she felt stupid. I could see her top lip sweat, and I just deliberately unraveled right in front of her, saying how fantastic she was. Oh, she I really like, meant oh, it. Oh, yeah. I really did. I don't think she thought that I meant it. Right. She probably thought you were, like... Being sarcastic, but right. I don't do that to anyone. Right, right. And they were just great. But she was great. Yeah. And she did that solo album. I bought the solo album. Now ain't the time for your tears. And there was a great Elvis single. Elvis Costello wrote it. There was a fantastic single on that. Um... She went, Jack the Hat. Da, da, da. It was really evil sound of single. Elvis Costello wrote the whole album. Oh, you don't remember the name of the single? Come on. Um, I don't remember. She named up the Nameless Ones. The coming nameless, on down with the Nameless Ones. Nameless Ones is the name of the song, I think, right? Wow. That was thrilling. I can't believe a record company let her go. Well, she. I saw. Um, Pulp was opening up for Blur in New York, so this must have been like seven years ago, maybe. And I had never really heard of Pulp at that point. And I went to the show, and Wendy James was at the show. So she gave me her number. She was in New York recording an album and said, come by the studio. And I went by the studio, and she wasn't there. And then I guess the album never came out. But that album was like 15 years ago, at least 10 years ago, her solo record. Oh, she was so excited. We should tell that girl to shut up and... Baby, I don't Baby, care. I don't care. You're the only one. Sister Moon. Maybe she was just too much for colour television, though. Maybe she yeah. had a little bit too much of an edge. There was something loose cannon about her, wasn't there? You could tell that, given a position of power. Oh, she was such a great pop star. But I do like Shirley Manson as well. I like Shirley Manson's records, but I went to go see them a few months ago, and they're just kind of boring to watch live. But Does she write the lyrics? Probably co-writes them. I don't like this I, new album. I do but like I garbage. Like... I don't know. You left an album at my house, and there's like three good tracks on it. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, it's the one before the. Oh wait, I probably left the last one there. Does it have Androgyny? I love that one. Oh, so that's where it is. I couldn't find it. That's right. We I didn't have a sleeve. Right. I, I, I don't think it's even got a track listed on a fact because I was doing the photo shoot for that exhibition. Uh -huh. Like three days of intense photo shoot, and that was the album. Oh, that's good. It was on all the time, but we kept putting on the track Androgyny. There's another. Boys in the girls room. That's androgyny, but then there's the other one, which is, um, I forget, the video is good. She's like invisible in the video. She's standing at a microphone and then like she disappears and just her gloves are left or something. 
I didn't see the video. I like the album before it much better. I'm hoping after these three Cosmopolitans, I'm going to feel just like Carrie and Sex and the City. Just like Sarah. Like just like Sarah, Sarah Jessica Parker. And what, what are you going to do? Walk on the street and take some walk home on a date? And then kiss someone on the, on the stoop? And then write about it? Write about it on your laptop. I was supposed to be on an episode what of Sex and the City. What a life. If only life was just really like that. I was so gagged out by Sex and the City. But I, it's New York, isn't it? And it just... A lot of people that I know really don't like Sex and the City. And a lot of people you would expect to like it. Don't like it. Don't like it. But it's like, but in a way, that's our reality. Shop I like it. I was going to... I know Michael Patrick, who's the, the producer and writer. And I was going to be an extra on it in okay. June. But then I left to, to go to Barcelona, but I was going to be... They were going to Joe's Pub, which is like a small cabaret yeah. theater. And I was going to be sitting there at a table, but I never... I, I left to go to Barcelona. I missed and of course, it was no good without you. That's what he said. He said the show... He said that... The, he sent me an email saying that... The, That's a great thing to say. He said the show was a complete disaster without you, of course. He's a very smart guy. He's a nice guy. Very smart. I think she's so pretty. I love her. I can love she all looks the characters. better in person. In the last, I, I think we're quite behind. I'm not sure about you have series one, two, and three. But the last series that we got was where Miranda's mother died, and there was like all the serious issues in it, and it was really realistic. I didn't see that. You didn't see that with a few. I haven't over. seen all of them. I got very sad. I even bought the whole video box set. They're doing one more season next year, and that's it. And that's it. Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, they just shot. I hope they. A life. They shot next season, which will air. They just finished shooting next season, and then they shoot one more season, but there's two more seasons that will air. What can I do? Sleep. Well, Sarah's having a baby in real life. It's a sensible mm -hmm. sleep. It's like a lobster. I know, I feel all twisted. Mm -hmm. I've never been so hot in a summer outfit. Thank you very much. Well, it's kind of humid outside, but it's warm in here as well, and then... It's the beauty lighting. Maybe. But this is supposed to be a summer season outfit. But it's got... Yeah, but it's Vivian. It's like, it's not about practicality. I feel like a glass blower's arse. It's that hot. Mm -hmm. And when we arrived, I was going to let me help you with your skirt. It's not a skirt. Uh -huh. It's short. Short. I don't do skirt. You should never wear a skirt when you're over 19. You never what? I went to the showroom yesterday. I mean, after I went to the studio, I went to the press office. The Westwood press office. The Westwood thing. And I was looking at the, the racks, and um, they had kilts there. And I, I kind of like the idea of, was like... It very wrinkly and scruffy looking. They have that one. That one's out already. But these were, like, more pleated, pleated plaid, you know, more traditional in a way. I think they're kind of great in a way. Oh, really? Good. Yeah. You could wear one of those easily. I wore one... Um, like more open, hills. I wore a skirt over a pair of bondage trousers like in the early 80s when I went to art school. Um, but now it would be kind of good. I, I think it might be nice on, on top of a pair of jeans as well, maybe. Kills look great on guys. Yeah, I can't wear one, I look like a complete tranny in a skirt. So. Uh huh. And that's why I'm touchy about these shorts because I keep feeling like they're a skirt. If I was going to wear a skirt, it wouldn't be this long, right? You know, my hand would be a little bit shorter. <laughs> My hemline would be right up around my neck. I want to get a kilt, I think. I like the wrinkly, scruffy ones that last the days. Those are kind of nice. Summer season, they look like they've been through the washing machine. Yeah, they almost look like canvasy or like... Yeah, and yeah. I bought a sweater from her that I know the people in the shop felt so sorry for me buying this sweater because they thought, what are you buying that sweater for? It's disgusting. <laughs> what colour is it? They describe it as raspberry, but it's like a rust and it looks like it's been covered in mud and then put through a washing machine and it's all misshapen. And it looks like a tramp. You know when you get a sweater that's been through the washing machine far so often, but you've hung it up and the sleeves have gone extra long uh -huh. and it's time to go to the goodwill with that uh -huh. sweater. Well, it looks like that. It looks terrible, but I loved it because it looked terrible and I bought it to go through airports and so people would think I was really poverty stricken, but I know I really wasn't. Uh -huh. And this guy was serving me in the shop and he said, well, we sold a lot of the black ones. And he couldn't say why I was choosing the raspberry one uh -huh. because it looked more thoughtless. And I know it's disgusting. But I just like the fact that she thought it looked wonderful. Mm -hmm. and no matter what anybody says, that it's Andrea's designs, everything, I'm sure that she has to... Final say. I'm sure she doesn't not care. 
She'd have to agree on everything, I'm sure. And she's out at workrooms working. What is when it? You got, she's at the workroom working. She was working yesterday when I went. I mean, she's not. She's working. She was making. Um, she was sort of working. There was some denim thing I remember seeing on a, a thing, and then there was a lot of muslin pieces. The guy. It'd be awful if she died. I don't even. That'd be think worse than Andy Warhol for me. Really would. I'd be devastated if she came off that bicycle and went under a long She's like the equivalent of in England of Andy Warhol in America. She's more important than the Queen. Absolutely. She's well, she's had much more of an influence. The Queen, oh, come on. You Where know. do tourists go when they come here? Japanese tourists, they in Westwood. Where mm -hmm. do we Even if it's just for the, to look mm -hmm. at what it is, her name is associated with England. She's so great. Why do you think Japanese people like Vivian Westwood so much? I think she's a symbol of rebellion to the Japanese because I've done. It's very hard to realise when you're actually there working, as I have been, they're very repressed, and anything that signals freedom of expression to them, they worship, and I think she signals freedom of expression much more than another fashion designer would. The rebellion of England, the punk thing, it's tied up in history, and I don't think they have that particularly big a youth culture history. And she's taken in every, every youth culture movement, rockers, teddy boys, perverts, I think she's taken a new culture into her designs when she started and as she's progressed and I think she's important to the Japanese because of that. I didn't because realize how rebel. repressed yeah, mm -hmm. Japanese people are, they're incredibly repressed and you think over there, oh everything's great, they're all having such great fun, they're not. You've been there a number of times, oh. right? Um, I love it, I, I so love it and I just can't wait to get back there, but it's not even for the work. I, it's not because people are nice to me or anything, because I've been wandering the streets and nobody's even known who I was, because I go out. When I'm on a big profile visit, it's difficult to go out because they really saturate the media with your presence there. Mm -hmm. And I think, I'm not quite sure how the system works, but I'm pretty sure that they alert the fan base where you stay in, so outside your hotel, it's full of fans. But we've been in there on promo visits where you're just doing interviews with journalists and things, and nobody really knows you there, so I've had the times go out and wander around Japan very anonymously and I just love the place and find it very easy to function there. I speak a bit of Japanese but I'm not going to give you a demonstration. No. I'm very good at Japanese. And like they're very seductive, the Japanese race, that when you when you get a pissy one they're extremely pissy or you get a really good looking one, you get a, you get really, really handsome men that look kind of like a hybrid of Cherokee Indians and Japanese mm -hmm. and you get these girls that are really beautiful. And they have this whole manner of subservience and then after you've been with them for a while you realise, hold on, they're acting subservient but really they manipulate me, they're very very crafty about it, it's very very clever, we could learn a lot from the Japanese with all the bowing and scraping them, uh -huh. they get more out of you like that. I have a friend in New York who's Japanese, he's lived there for a long time, but like he told me, say if there's a pretty Japanese girl she'll have like 10 suitors, at least like 10 men who will do like anything for her. So they get sort of used to that. Like if they come to New York, sometimes they'll see pretty Japanese girls who, you know, they would never hold the door for you or do things because they're used to being, you know, people doing all that for them in a way. It's like they get away with murder because when they're pissy, they're unbelievable yeah. and the race is getting more and more beautiful. Mm -hmm. I saw a Japanese guy today at the gym who was like, you know, like perfect body and beautiful skin and like a perfect specimen. I think they're aliens, there's a man on the next table trying to discuss if my lips are full of collagen. Well, honey, I'm not both trying to figure it out. Where did Gato go? He went to that restaurant near here or something? Yeah. We should meet him afterwards and then go to the photo place. It'd be nice to take a walk or something outside well, tonight. In this outfit? No. Like in your neighborhood or something, I'm saying. In this outfit? No, I mean, you can change, but I'm just saying... It's kind of a nice night. Because it's got some kind of rubberized... It's, it's all... It's, it's all, like, rubberized. It's all twisted up into places where it really shouldn't go. Mm -hmm. I feel sorry for that, because when I saw this on the catwalk, the male model that was wearing it looked so uncomfortable. She was like... Yo, I want to go shoot some hoops uh -huh. <laughs> after I get this shit off. Absolutely. That's what they're all like. When I did that show for her, everybody was um, all all straight, and they were all like, "Yeah, what's up? Hey, how you doing?" You know, with the curlers in. It's very funny. 
Oh, you were great when you did the Westwood show. We did that little trip, Naomi. Trip, yeah, my little homage to Naomi. Tripping on the stairs, almost. On that note. Should we go? A little fresh air, maybe. Fresh, Naomi. run out without paying the bill. Maybe. Should we go scoot? They'll, 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 they'll run out. Can you run in those shoes? Oh, my bag. I forgot my bag. Oh. Okay, thank you. Oh, bye. Thank you, bye-bye.